Well, hey everyone, and welcome to Church at Home. We're so excited that you're here with us. I actually got our worship team here. How you hey guys doing? Hey everybody, doing hey. good. Really, really good. good. So we got Josh and Matt. My name is Zach, I'm one of the pastors here. And man, we are just so pumped for today. We're glad you're jumping in, whether you're watching from your car, your house, your home, wherever you're at, we're just glad that you're here with us. And, and man, we got a great, great day ahead. Any sneak peeks of like what we're doing today? You give them the sneak peek, Matt. I'm holding this mic so still right now. <laughs> I don't know about sneak peeks, but all I want, I just want to get the record straight that we did not plan this. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, It's yeah. going on right here. The black we jacket, did not plan dude. this. Even Josh is kind of flirting into the it a little black, bit. Yeah, Josh, last jacket. week, you and I, you and I matched um, pretty, <laughs> pretty well, too. So, like, we're just, we got our jacket game going at, at Journey here. Uh, tell us who wore it better, maybe. Like, which one of us do you guys wore it best? Yeah, yeah. we know. Also, Josh is wearing his own t shirt. Uh, let's also make that. <laughs> Can we make that note for a second? Hey, he, Josh he, Renee right there. He designed he's wearing it, his own t shirt. Matt designed so, it, though. So it works. It I, works. I, I so shout that. out to him. So. Uh, do you guys want to tell us maybe what, maybe one song that we're singing that we get to look forward to today? Josh. Why don't you tell us? He, he has no clue what songs we're singing to. Matt, Matt asked me that because I, 
I, it's about the goodness of God. I know that much. We just we've been talking about songs all day, and oh, they blurred in his head. They are. Uh, we're gonna be singing a song called "There's Nothing That Our God Can't Do." What's the uh, abbreviation for it, or what do we yeah, do? Yeah, it's such, it's a mouthful. That's the name of the song is, there's nothing that our God cannot do. The That's worship what team is. gives it, well, how it, do you say it's that? It's TNTOGCD. What was that? TNTOGCD. Try saying that. TNTOGCD. TNT That's why I couldn't <laughs> say the name of the song. TNTOGCD. When we talk about it in the office, we say TNTOGCD because yep. uh, yep. there's nothing that our God can't do. It's just a long. Yep. We also have a big, big announcement towards the end of service about some new regathering plans. So we're really, really excited about all that's in store today. We really believe that there's just going to be a message of hope for you. Pastor Scott is back. Yeah, um, anyone missing him? Yeah, okay, sure. good. That was the right answer. That was good. Yeah, there. <laughs> we, we miss you a ton. Yeah, so we're going to get started here soon. So we're excited about that. And then uh, we actually have one thing that you can partner with us on. We talked about this a little bit last week, um, but every school year we start off the year by helping out with four kids. Tell us a little bit more about four kids. Yeah, what, what such, we do with them. A, such an awesome organization here in South Florida trying to just eradicate the need for uh, foster care, but they just do a phenomenal job placing kids in homes where the love of Christ is present. And uh, we get every year, we get the opportunity to bless those kids with backpacks, just full of love, full of supplies, and, and what a better time to do that. Yeah, we're excited about that. You can actually find some more details on our social pages. So check us out on Facebook. Um, and while you're there, actually share the link to this service right now. Let everyone around you know that they can be encouraged today too, because it's going to be truly a remarkable special day. In fact, like I think we're about to start. You guys, yeah, you guys yeah, got to go. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna see we're gonna see them later. You'll see them on stage here soon. Uh, in the meantime, man, share this link, jump in, because we're really gonna get started in just a second. And I want to tell you, wait until the very end of service, because we have a special special announcement that you're not going to want to miss. Uh, we're gonna be sharing our plan for regathering. I'm sure you've been missing hanging out with us. We've been missing hanging out with you, and we're excited for some opportunities that we're gonna get to come together. And Pastor Scott's gonna be sharing that plan at the end of service so you're not going to want to miss out on that the band is going to be ready they're going to be rocking today too so we got some exciting things and don't forget to partner with us in four kids for everything that we have going on and man i'm actually hearing the band back there you can hear them kind of talking a little bit and i think we should just kind of head in and get started here in just a second so join us as we get started today well, welcome everyone to Church at Home. We're so glad that you decided to join us wherever you are. I just want to encourage you. Would you lift your voice with us as we declare the truth that there is nothing impossible for our God. We lift our voices in conviction as we sing this out. Come on, sing it out. Just one word. In just one word, you calm the storm that surrounds me. In just one word. The darkness has to retreat In just one touch I feel the presence of heaven Just one touch In just one touch My eyes were open to see My heart can't help but believe Sing it! There's nothing that our God can do there's not a mountain that he can move. Oh, praise the name that makes a way. There's nothing that our God can do. Just one word, you heal what's broken inside. Just one word, can you revive every dream? Just one touch, sing it out. In just one touch, I feel the power of heaven. In just one touch, my eyes were open to see. My heart can't help but believe. There's nothing that our God can do. There's not a mountain that He can Prison wall, you can break through. Oh, praise the 
this is the moment of the song where we let faith rise up wherever we are, whatever room, whatever space. Sing this. Oh, I will believe. Come on. For greater things, there's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise. Let all agree. There's no power like the power. Come on, sing it out. I will believe. For greater things, there's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise, let all agree. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Why we believe? Hey! For greater things, there's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise, let all I just want to encourage you, sing it over your circumstance, sing it over your family, sing it over your situation. There's nothing, there's nothing that our God can do. Declare. There's not a mountain that He can move. Oh, praise the name that makes a way. There's nothing that our God can do. There's nothing. Oh God, we trust you. Yes, God, we trust you. Right where we're at, we run to find shelter under your wings. You are safe. You are trustworthy. You are good. And we sing to you now, right where we're at. Let the King of my heart be the mountain where I run. The fountain I drink from. the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide the ransom for my life oh he is my song cause you are good you're good oh you are good you're good
you're never gonna let, never gonna let me down. We sing right where we're at. You're never gonna let, never gonna let me down. In my situation, you're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. We sing now. You're never gonna let, never gonna let. that that truth sinks deep down inside you, that you have a God that will never let you down, but more importantly, he will never let you go. So no matter what you're going through, no matter what you brought into today, know that he stands there with you in the midst of it and he remains in control. Can I tell you this though? Welcome to church at home. In fact, if this is your first time here, we want to give you a warm journey welcome. We want to tell you how excited we are that you're here with us. In fact, right now in the comments below, Journey family, let them know how much we appreciate them coming and visiting us today. Um, for everyone though, could you jump into those comments and actually find the connection card? Every single week, we pray over every single prayer request by name. So jump into that connection card, fill it out, let us know how we could be praying for you in this season. If you've been coming to Journey at all, if you've watched us at all, you know that we're actually all about seeing lives transformed. And one of the best ways that we do that is through our partnership with 4Kids. 4Kids is an organization that teams up Christian families and Christian homes with foster care um, families or foster kids in Palm Beach County. And we are so, so proud of our church and the way that we love and care for these foster kids and these foster families. And we have an incredible opportunity as we are headed back to school to come around, rally around these families and these kids and give every single kid their own backpack and their own set of school supplies. And so I wanna challenge you to step in. Um, you wouldn't believe the impact that it can make on a child's life, on a foster child's life, when everything else may be in chaos around them to get a backpack that's all theirs. So I wanna challenge you to jump into that. You can go to our Facebook pages and you find out more there. But speaking about transformation, uh, a couple weeks ago, I got an email um, from a lady named Sue from our church and she's been coming to Journey for a while and somewhere in the middle of summer, she got a terrible, terrible phone call from her daughter. And she found out that her daughter had actually been diagnosed with cancer. And so she immediately jumped on the airplane and flew to go see her daughter. While she was there, um, she actually got another phone call from her husband back home. And she found out that her husband was actually in the hospital too. And over the last two months, she's been bouncing back and forth, back and forth between these two hospitals. Her life is in full chaos. It's absolutely out of control, but there's been one consistent thing for her. Do you know what that is? It's Journey Church. And she sent me this email. I wanted to read this to you. Let's see if I can pull it out here. And here's what she said. She said, without Journey Church, I don't know where I would be. And without church at home, there's absolutely no way that I could stay connected. So thank you. I cannot tell you how much it means to have our church standing by our side in this dark time. Journey Church, first of all, can I tell you thank you. Thank you for your faithful giving and the ways that it impacts all of these lives in Paul Beach County's lives like Sue. If you wanna join us in giving, we've made the process so, so simple. Just visit gojourneychurch.com slash give and you can be part of the transformation that's happening all over Palm Beach County. 
Secondly, though, if you walked in today, maybe in a similar season of life like Sue, where it feels like life is out of control, where it feels like everything just may not be working, can I just tell you this? Our church is for you. Our God, even more importantly, is for you. And today is for you. And the message that Pastor Scott is about to bring, I hope, will be an encouragement in this season. So will you help me welcome our pastor to the stage? Well, I just want to say welcome to all of you there at Church at Home and our studio audience that's here uh, with us as well. It's, it's just such an honor to be a part of a community that's actually making such a difference and an impact. And to just hear stories like Sue and to be a part of what's going on and giving backpacks to these kids and being a part of this, guys. What, a, what an honor and what a privilege. And I'm just so proud of us as a church, of how we've responded during this difficult time to be a light in the world. So keep up the good work. So today, I am kind of excited today, and we're going to do a couple things that I want to kind of get you amped up for. The first is, I want you to let you know that today I'm going to talk a little bit about birds. Now, I know every one of you are just completely riveted and go, I can't wait to him to talk about birds, but we're going to get there in a minute. I know that, but we're not just going to talk about birds. At the end of it, I'm also going to give you some really cool updates on our regathering plan, some things starting next week, and so now you got to listen to this message, right, so you can get to the end and learn this. But today what I want to do is I kind of want to start out by sharing something that God just really put in my heart. And as God began to put it in my heart, minister to me, if you will, it just really helped me experience peace in this present time, even though our future is so crazy and uncertain. So today I just want to share a little bit about that. Now, sometimes if you've walked through something or walking through something that you've never walked through before, which is kind of like what we're all doing right now, right? And if you've walked through something that you've never walked through before, at times it can almost feel a little bit overwhelming, can it? It's almost like this idea is like, well, man, th this feels so much bigger because I feel like, like no one ever has experienced what we're experiencing today. And I think sometimes we even use words like we're in unprecedented times, like it's never been like this before. And so sometimes for me, what helps me get through that is to look in history and to look in a broader scope and start to realize that us living in uncertainty and with pandemics and some craziness all around, that we're not the only ones to ever go through this in the past. And and then other people have experienced things like this and actually gotten through this. And the reason why this is so important for us today is this, is because so often when we read the Bible and we read the teachings of Jesus, we actually disconnect the, the culture and the context of which Jesus is teaching to these people. Because if you, you know, read the Bible or you've watched these children's Bibles or whatever, we, we can kind of put Jesus as this image and the image we could put him is there's Jesus like petting sheep and taking you know, like relaxing walks through the countryside and they're catching fishes and going on boat rides. And, and sometimes it could almost feel like, well, Jesus, some of the things you're teaching might have been relevant for them. But right now in our world, I don't know how to really apply this to my life. And so today what I want to do is I just want to spend a few minutes kind of helping you understand the context of which Jesus is teaching the people that he's teaching and the people that he's trying to lead. Because when you understand what it is they're living through, when you understand the uncertainty and the craziness of their life, you'll realize that those words that he speaks to this audience he's about to teach is very relevant not just to them but also to us. You see, starting this to kind of understand where the Jewish people were in this first century with Jesus is the first thing we need to understand is they were slaves. In other words, they didn't have a vote. They didn't have the freedoms that we enjoy today. They were slaves of the Roman Empire. And they weren't just slaves of like a really cool, awesome kingdom. They, they were slaves of a psychopath called Caesar, who, by the way, if you ever thought or believed that political figures can be at times narcissistic, just understand something. Caesar told everybody he was the son of God. Like, like he literally demanded to be worshipped. That was who was ruling these Jewish people as they were slaves of the Roman Empire. And to make matters worse, it wasn't just Rome that was messed up. Rome and put in this puppet king. And I want you to understand a little bit about the family that kind of ruled from the birth of Jesus all the way through um, the life of Jesus into the disciples. And, and, and many of you know in history his name was Herod. Now Herod, to kind of understand this, was a crazy king. And when 
Jesus was born and Herod is king, he gets so jealous that there might be another person of royalty coming in this area that he orders the death of all these little children that were born around the time of Jesus. Not to mention he kills a few of his own children because he thinks they want his throne as well as one of his 11 wives. And so when you understand the royal family, if you will, in the day of Je time of Jesus, they were pretty messed up. And, and as messed up as Herod was, he has a son, and Herod the son who was ruling as Jesus is teaching, if you will, this message we're gonna look at him sharing today, he was no better than his father. That, that Herod, um, in his life, chose to marry his brother's sister, kind of a little bit weird, and, and then he's at a party, and as Herod is watching his stepdaughter dance, it said that it, it pleased him, whatever that means, and then he said, I'll give you anything you want, and his stepdaughter tells him, I want the head of John the Baptist, I want you to cut it off and bring it into the dinner party, and so Herod orders the death of the cousin of Jesus and brings his head into a dinner party for everyone to look at. Now, I don't know what your political view is, but I'm telling you something, whoever sits on in the White House when coming November or whatever it is, they're not going to be as bad as the family of Herod's. Now, it's not just that they are slaves. It's not just that they're in a corrupt political system. Do you realize that scholars say that these Jewish individuals were being double taxed? So they were being taxed by the temple. They were paying for the people that controlled all their education as well as being taxed by Rome. And so they were paying somewhere between 50 to 80% of their income into these corrupt regimes just to survive. They had economic uncertainty. They couldn't control where they were going. And to make matters worse, they also had corruption in the temple. In fact, in the times of Jesus, what the priest would do is they would manipulate the exchange rate. So as people would come in to go, I just want to worship God, and I want to give him an offering, they would add money to it. They would charge higher amounts so the priest could get rich on the backs of the poor. In fact, Jesus was so angry at this. You know the story, right? The loving Jesus, this kind Jesus. He walks into the temple with a whip and starts throwing these money changers out because they had turned God's house into a den of thieves. And so here is this group of people. They're gathered around a mountain to hear Jesus speak to them. And if you think that we are living in uncertainty, and we are living in uncertainty, imagine what it was like with them. A corrupt king, a corrupt kingdom, a corrupt church, an overtaxed society, they're slaves with no voice. And in the middle of this, Jesus gathers this audience together, and the words he speaks to them are just as relevant to us. Listen to what he says, Matthew chapter 6, verse 25, and here's what Jesus says. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life. To which you're like, Jesus, do you have any idea what's going on? For what will you eat or drink? Or about your body, what you will wear? For is life not more than food and the body more than clothes? And so Jesus starts this group of people. He's the son of God. He discerns what's going on in their heart. Like he knows. So all this crowd is there and he knows what they're walking through. And he says to them, hey guys, this is what, this is what I want you to understand. You don't have to live with worry and anxiety. You don't have to live like you're living right now. In fact, that word, by the way, um, that word for worry and anxiety literally means just you're distracted. It's like, hey guys, you're here and you kind of waited for this moment for generations and the Son of God is in your midst, but instead of being fully present with me, you're thinking about and worrying about a future that, by the way, you can't really control. By the way, you ever been there? You, you ever found yourself with your kids? Like, I know this is a struggle for me sometimes. Like, like, you're there with your boys or your kids, and, you're, and, and like physically you're there, but mentally you're somewhere else. You, you ever lay down in bed and you just want to rest, and it's like you're, like, like you're physically in bed, and the lights are off, and, and the fan is on, and, and you're just ready to sleep, and your body's ready, but your mind is thinking about all the things that could go wrong and all the things that are in the future. In other words, we have this ability to be in the present but not really present. We have the ability to actually be in incredible moments of our life but not really enjoy them because we are thinking about the future. And Jesus looks at this audience and he says, I look at you and here you are in this moment you've been waiting for. But you're not really here. Because where you really are is worried about a future that, by the way, you cannot control. 
And then Jesus says something. That at first, like you hear him say it, and you're kind of like, uh, I don't know if I'd use that example, Jesus. But when you understand what he was saying, you realize it's so powerful. And here's what he says to these group of people that are distracted, they're worried, their anxiety, filled with all of it. And here's what Jesus says. Look at the birds of the air. I told you we were going to talk about birds. Look at the birds of the air. That They don't sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. And then he asks them a question. Are you not much more valuable to God than they? Now, at first glance, you're looking at people. Imagine us right now. There are uncertain times that things feels like life's out of control. And Jesus walks on the scene and goes, hey, guys, look at the birds. And isn't there part of you that just kind of thinks to yourself, Jesus, you're taking and you're oversimplifying a very complicated thing. We just can't look at birds. We've got taxes and farms and education and uncertainty and there's armies and we don't know what's going to happen. Like, what do you mean? And I think what happens so often is we, we read this phrase and we don't fully understand what Jesus is actually saying. And we think what Jesus is saying is, hey, guys, just go through life, buy a VW bug, go surfing, hang out, grow your own garden, and just, just don't worry about life. Let everything just go. But that's not what he's saying. In fact, what I, what I want us to understand when it comes to this, we need to understand is, see, birds don't just go through life doing nothing. Like birds, when they go through life, they, they understand something. They've got to work to eat. They've got to find and rummage to find berries or bugs or whatever this is. Like, like see, in other words, Jesus isn't saying to be like this carefree life where we don't even think or do anything at all. No, it's not what he's saying. In fact, understand this as well. This message that he says, don't look at the birds, is in the middle of a message where Jesus gives them all kinds of instructions on how to live life. He teaches them about borrowing money and generosity and integrity and marriage and forgiveness and, 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 and the Sabbath. And he's teaching them about like how to work and, and, and following God's laws and rules. In other words, when we need to understand something, that Jesus is saying this in the context of teaching all of these people, hey, here's how you should live today. Here's how you live today. Here's what you should do. And yet he says to these individuals, hey, guys, I want you to consider... Or I want you to learn from the birds of the air. So what is he talking about? Can I, can I tell you what he's talking about? You see, he's focusing more on what the birds aren't doing rather than what they are doing. And what they aren't doing is worried about their future. What the birds aren't doing is going, okay, how do we control the climate? How do we control all these things? How do we make sure these trees? No, what they're doing is, is these birds are living life in a way where they just trust that God has built a system that they can survive in. In other words, that the birds are just going through this life going, hey, here's what we know. We believe that there's a creator of the universe. Somehow there's this God, and he brings seasons in. He brings the sun up each morning, and the sun goes down, and he brings these bugs in different, different seasons, these berries in different seasons. He's built this incredible system where bees like pollinate, and these flowers produce food. And what we know is this. We can't control the future. So we have this ability to simply do what we're created to do in the present and trust God with our future. See, see what he said? He goes, look at the birds of the air. They, they, they're not in control of their future, and they know it. They're not worried about all these other things. They're living life in this moment. They're living life doing what they were created to do because they have faith. They actually believe that God is there. And as they do their part, God's going to provide the sun and the rain and the soil and the bugs and these, these elements. And this is what Jesus is saying to them. Jesus is saying, listen, if, if God built a system that cares for birds, how much more, how much more is he going to care for you? How much more is God who birthed you in his image, who loves you so much that Jesus has left heaven to come be with you, to save you and rescue you. And Jesus, looking at this audience, he's saying, listen to me, if God allows birds of the air and their faith and trust in God to allow them to live fully present and at peace and he takes care of them, then how much more is God gonna take care of you? How much more as you do what God created you to do? How much more can you live at peace? How much more could you live in the present? How much more can you do that? And you can count and trust in God. In other words, guys, your faith 
needs to be the same as birds who understand they can't control the future. All they can do is control the present. And they live with this confidence that God will do his part if they do their part. And Jesus looks at these people that are living in a future they can't control. And he says to them, look at the birds of the air. Shift from a focus you can't control, a future that you can't control. To what you can. In fact, look, look at what he says next. Look at verse 27. He goes, by the way, can any of you, by worrying, living in a future you can't control, can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? Jesus goes, listen, I know you're present, but you're not really present. You're living in a future. And I just want you to realize something, that there is a cost and there is a consequence to this worry and anxiety about a future that you can't even control in the first place. There's an emotional cost. There's a relational cost. There's a physical cost. There's all of these implications that come, but there's no benefit. Like worry and anxiety and fear just rob you of your present, but they don't do anything for your future. And then I love what Jesus does. And he goes, and so why do you worry about, I love what he does here, why do you worry about your clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They don't labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these. In other words, once again, look at the birds. Look at the flowers. Look at how God's built systems to care for things. And how much more is he going to care for you? And then he continues and he says this. If this is how God clothes the grass of the field which is here today and tomorrow thrown in the fire, not very valuable. You are very valuable, right? You are created in my image. You're so much more worth to to me than birds and, and, and plants. Will he not much more clothe you? And then he says, you of little faith. Now, once again, here, here's Jesus. He, he's the son of God. He's looking directly into the hearts and the souls of the audience. And he goes, I know where you're at. You're present, but you're not present. You're living in this future. And so you're, you're weighed down with anxiety. And as a result, you're not only not changing your future, you're robbing yourself of enjoying the present, what God is doing in your life. That's what, that's what he knows. He knows that. And so he says to them, and one of the things I see in you is you're worried about your clothing. How are you going to provide? How is God going to provide in the future? But here's what I was thinking when I was looking at this, Okay. Jesus is on a mountain. He, he's on a mountain with hundreds and hundreds of people. And here's the question I have for you. How many of them do you think are naked? How many? I mean, there's probably a couple kids running around like that. Like my kids when they were young, they were basic nudists, right? But, but how many of them don't have any clothes? And the answer is none. In other words, and here's the picture I want you to see. All of them... We're, we're sitting there, and God had provided in the past, and they were clothed. God had provided through the systems he created, whether it's friendships, relationships, working, reaping, sowing, whatever it is. God had met their needs, and there they are clothed. But instead of enjoying the clothing that God provided them, they were worried about what he might not do. See the principle? Like, like I can't enjoy God. Like, I know what you gave me. I know you took care of me. But I'm just worried about God. What if you don't? Like, what about this? And what about that? Here's why I say this. Don't, don't we have the same tendencies? Like, like don't, don't we kind of find ourselves in this moment, like even now, worried about our future? And, and here, so many of us right now are watching this message. And you're watching this message on a flat screen TV from your iPhone or your iPad or your laptop in an air conditioning house or apartment, eating all the food that you had, in fact, probably going on a diet because you've had too much food during this pandemic, if you're like me, and yet here we are. But God, what, what, what about what happens to my industry? You got, listen, I know, like, listen, I know you took care of me. Like, I know I'm fine now. And, and, uh, but God, here's what I'm really wondering. What, what about if this person wins office? And, and, and what about this industry? And what about my future? And what, like, God, I know you've met my needs now, but what I really want to know, God, but will you always do this? Will you all? And so what takes place is we don't enjoy the faithfulness of God because we're so worried, divided, distracted by what might not happen in the future. And, and, and Jesus looks at them and says, guys, look, look at the birds. Do you know how much God loves them? Do, do you know how much God loves you more than them? Look, not just look, look at the fly. Look at the systems, what God has done. How much more is he going to take care of you? 
Guys, can I tell you something? Do you think a pandemic is going to make your father abandon you? Like, I'm not saying we're not going to have hard times. I mean, Jesus told his disciples that we're going to have trials. We're going to have moments of things. Not, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, do you really think that a pandemic can make God go, oh, I can't take care of you anymore? And so he looks at this, this group of people, and he sees them distracted with the uncertain future, and he looks at them, and he loves them so much, and he looks at them and says, guys, you're so much more valuable to me than birds and flowers, and if God takes care of them, how much more is he going to take? How much more can you live in the present and trust God with your future? Hey, listen, your faith needs to grow a little bit, right? You need to be more like the birds that are trusting God with their future so they're enjoying their present. And then he tells them this next verse, and here's where he goes. He says, guys, so don't worry. Don't be distracted about a future you can't control. You don't, you don't need to be. Don't worry about what shall we eat, future tense. What shall we drink, future tense. What shall we wear, future tense. And then I love what he says. He says, for the pagans run after all these things. The people that don't have a relationship with God the people that, that aren't worshiping the creator, that aren't, haven't learned to trust God with their present. He goes, those people need to run around because they've never surrendered to God, but you have a relationship with God. And then I love what Jesus does next because it's so personal. He says this, and your heavenly father not the cosmic creator, not just some force out there in the universe. No, your personal heavenly father, and I love this next thing, knows that you need them. And Jesus does something powerful here in these stories. And what he does here is he makes God personal. He says, I want you to know something about God and your needs. And you're not just one of billions of people and this universe of billions of stars. No, 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 no. You're God's child and he is your father. And God is aware of the hairs on your head. And he's aware of exactly what you're walking through at work. Exactly what you're walking through with your enemy. Exactly what's walking through in your marriage. Exactly what you're walking through in your emotions. Exactly what you're walking through in your future. God says, I want you, Jesus, I want you to understand something. Your father, he's your father. He made you in his image, and he's fully aware and in tune to your life. You see, in essence, what Jesus was saying is this. Most of the people in that audience, and I would say most of the people listening to me today, would say, yeah, we believe God is in control of the future. Like Jesus is going to come back, and we, yeah, we believe that God is in control of the future. But Jesus wanted to take it a step further. And what he wanted them to understand is this. That God isn't just in control of the future. He's in control of your future. It's personal. You're valuable. As you learn to honor God and trust God in your present, God's going to take care of you. God's got this. You don't have to be so distracted. You don't have to be robbed of enjoying God in the present because he's not just God. He's your father. And he's not just in control of the future. He's in control of your future. So Jesus says, look at the birds of the air. They, 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 they can teach you something. They, they have so much confidence in what God is going to do in the future that they're able to live their life fully in the moment. They're able to sing, flock together, dance, whatever birds do. They're, they're able to lay eggs, make baby birds. Why? because they trust that God's got the future. And Jesus is saying to us, you can live in the same freedom and in the same power and under the same promise, but even more so because you are valuable and in the image of God. And then Jesus shifts their focus. Here's what I want you to think to do. And, and I want you to see how he, he shifts their focus here in this moment. He's like, hey, there's this one thing that you can do. All right? There's this one thing you can do that's going to change your present and your future. You don't have to worry about these things, but here's the one thing that I want you to do, and I want you to see what he says. And he goes, therefore, because of this is true about God, because this system of reaping and sowing works, he says, so here's what I want you to do. Seek first. Make it the biggest priority of your life, God's kingdom and God's righteousness. What is he saying there? See, the kingdom of God, I want us to understand this, the kingdom of God was not simply like a physical location like we would think of. The kingdom of God is simply the rule and the reign of God. Jesus looks at this group of people that are, that are they're terrified of a future, that are being robbed of enjoying the life that God wanted them to live. 
And he goes, if you just would shift your focus from this future that you can't even control, just seek God now in the present. Like, worship Him. Pray. Spend time in the Torah and the Scriptures. Like, live out some of these, these things. Enjoy the peace of God that surpasses understanding. You just need to make sure that the priority in your life is actually seeking God in this relationship with your Father, who, by the way, controls your future and the future. And secondly, seek God's righteousness, which simply means apply all the things that Jesus just taught you. Do the right thing. And then I love what Jesus does, because he gives them this promise, and this promise holds true today. He says, and when you begin to do that, here's what you can hold on to. And then all, all these things, your provision, the food, the clothing, the rent, all these things will be given to you as well. The God that controls the future has the ability to reward you. And therefore, don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. There's going to be issues, for each day has enough trouble of its own. In essence, what Jesus did to that audience and what Jesus did to me and what I hope Jesus is doing to you right now is simply this, is that Jesus seems to be shifting our focus from a future that you cannot control anyways to the present that you can't control. And, 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 I th and the beauty of this is we can move from this, I'm worried and I'm anxious and what if this goes wrong and that goes wrong and, and be there and go, okay, God, I can't control that, but here's what I can control. I can control how I live today. You see the peace that that would bring? Did, did you realize what that would look like to be like the birds of the air, just to live your life in a way where you go, God, you're in control of my career. You're in control of my company. You're in control of my boss. You're in control of my kids. You're in control. So God, here's what I can do. I can't always control those outcomes, but I can control what I'm going to do right now. So you can't control when this pandemic is over. You can't. But you can control the kind of faith you bring into it, can you? You can't control if, if you focus on all the things that God hasn't done or he might not do, or if you spend your time thanking God for how he's cared for you so far. So you, you can't control when your kids are going back to school. It's not soon enough for most of you, I get. But you can control what you do with your kids in this extra time that you have. You, you, you might not be control the markets and where it's going, but you know what you can control? What you do with what God's given you how you're faithful with money he's entrusted you with today. See, so you, you, you might not be able to control when we actually regather and come back and you get back to your team, but you know what you can control? Are you gonna get distracted from God? They, they just released a study that said about 33% of the Christians that used to go to church are not even going anymore. In other words, they're not seeking God first any longer. They, they just got distracted, they got busy, and now they've drifted away. You see, you can't control what happened, but you can control what you do. And, and what's so beautiful about what Jesus is teaching, principle all throughout the Bible, is what Jesus is teaching us is, is that we shift our focus from a future we can't control to the present we can control. And as we begin to seek God first and do the right thing, here's what's amazing. God promises that we're going to reap what we sow. And so we live in this present with God, I trust you so I can be fully present. I can enjoy this life you've given me. But also as we're sowing these good things, we're also altering our future. Because one day in our future, we're going to reap what we're sowing in this present. So Jesus, I believe, wants to say the same thing to you that he said to those people all those years ago. Look at the birds of the air. They don't reap, sow, store away in barn. Like they're not living in the future and God takes care of them. And how much more does God not just want to control the future, but actually your future so you can fully live in the present without being worried about a future you can't control. In many ways, um, even us as a church, we begin to apply this to our model. Because as we're sitting there going, when do we regather? And I know that's a lot of the questions that people have. And so as we were processing, when do we regather? When, it's gonna be this, it's gonna be that. We're always looking to the future. And that's when this moment began to come to me where I started realizing, hey, we can't necessarily control the future and where it's going, but we can control what we do in the present. And so we started just going, okay, what does it look like for us as a church to do the same thing that Jesus taught us to do in our lives? What can we do instead of focusing on what we can't do? And so we just have come up with five things 
five things that we want to do to help you seek God first. Five things that we want to help you to seek his kingdom and his righteousness to empower you to live the life that Jesus called you to live in the present, once again, trusting him with your future. And so there's five things we're going to start even next week to help us simply do what we can do. And here's the first thing. We're going to challenge us to, to do something called church at home with friends or church with friends. And what that means is in the Bible, we're actually commanded, by the way, that to not give up meeting together as some are in their habit of doing. It's a scriptural command for us to be in community. But it's not a scriptural command for us to be in a large crowd. And so one of the beautiful things about church with friends is if you are already doing life in a bubble with people, Simply invite the people you're already working out with, already working with, hanging out with, your kids are playing. Invite the same people you're in contact with, but now step up and go, hey, I'm gonna seek God's kingdom and help us all come together because some of them have been distracted. Some of them need your text and your phone call because they are, they're drifting right now and bringing them back to your house or maybe sharing these different homes to bring that church with friends is what God wants to use you to draw these people, his children, back. And so if you want to be part of Church with Friends, you can just simply go to our website. We give you everything you need. We're going to give you a link to watch a service on demand whenever you want. We're going to give you a coach. Anything you can do to help you be a part of what God's called you to do. The second thing that we're going to do, like what we can do living in this moment right now, is we're going to do First Saturday Serve. And, and if you're up to being around people and, and you're already doing that, we're going to come together. We're going to be doing things for foster kids and do some great things. And on August 1st, we're going to come together and we're going to serve our community. The third thing um, that we're going to do is starting next Sunday, we're going to launch a brand new series I'll be teaching, and we're going to be walking through a 21-day fast together as a church. Because part of seeking God is actually seeking God in prayer. And, and that Jesus actually says that there are some mountains that we face, and by the way, we face a lot of mountains right now, that can only be conquered with prayer and fasting. And so as a church, we're going to gather together for 21 days, and we're going to, some of you are going to give up, uh, um, you know, meat or dairy or sugar or Netflix or social media. We're going to give you all these different options, and we're going to come together as a church starting August 2nd, and we're going to do 21-day fast for our church, for you, and for our community. And part of that fast, we're also going to start launching the following week, a couple nights, we're going to gather together for our living room smaller worship. And what we're going to do is we're going to gather one night at Lake Worth and one night at Boynton. And we're going to limit the size of the crowd and we're going to social distance and we're going to come together and we're going to pray and we're going to worship and we're going to experience like the corporate worship that I have missed so greatly as a church. And we're going to give you that opportunity once again in a smaller setting. And then last but not least, we're going to start student summer nights, which are just smaller type gatherings of students. Students, um, not the full thing where kids can come together in community. You see what we did? God, I, I don't know what the future holds. Like, I don't know when it's all going to be over, but, but here are some things that we can do in the meantime. Here's some ways we can bring community back to church. Here's some way we can help you to put God first, seek His kingdom and His righteousness to get back on track to experience God. So here's my challenge to you as we come to a close, and that's this. What if God really was in control of your future? Like, what, what, what if what Jesus spoke was actually true? And if what we would do is take our focus out of this future we can't control and bring it back to the present that we can control, and what if we were to really seek Him first and His righteousness first? And by doing that, we would be able to live in this peace that surpasses understanding because we would know that the God of the universe doesn't simply control the future, he controls your future. Let me pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much that you make this so personal, that you're just not the God of all creation, but you're our Heavenly Father, that you know the hairs on our head, that you're aware and in tune with what we're going through, and that you have given us this promise that if we will seek you first, Father, that you will not only take our present in your control, you will also take our future. So God, I just pray people all over that we will learn from the birds of the air and understand that we have been given this gift and this promise to live in this life with faith and trust and seeking you first. Because we know that you don't just control the future, but God, you control my future. In Jesus' name we pray.
Thanks, Pastor Scott. Man, what an incredible, incredible message. Um, my wife and I actually play a game with each other um, every once in a while. When one of us is getting controlling, we'll look at each other and kind of wink and, and put our hands out like this, just as a reminder to let go of the things that you're not supposed to be controlling and to grab hold of the things that God actually has for you. And man, we are so excited for the month of August and all that's ahead and these five different ways that we can all come together as the church, these five different ways that we can seek God's righteousness and God's kingdom in our life. And so I wanna challenge you to visit gojourneychurch.com slash regathering. Focus in on the things that we can grab hold of. Focus in on the future that God has for you, the present that he wants to experience with you right now and visit us there and jump into those things. Um, as always, we'd ask you to like us subscribe to our YouTube channel and our Facebook pages so that you can join in with us every single time that we're live. And man, we are going to see you guys online next week.